incorporation to a smart city as most experts also agree. What it means is an incorporation of smart technology, smart infrastructure, smart urban planning and the list goes on. I am Gitanjali Prasad Chabria and in this episode of the Smart City series, we are going to interact with a young architect who is not just passionate about her work but also works towards better living in an urban India and has also strong views on smart cities. So Pratima and I decided to catch up at Andheri's local passenger to have a chat on smart cities. Pratima, how have you been? Very well. Or Pratima, you know, I've been thinking, I've been reading a lot on smart city these days because the series that I'm doing, I'm a little confused. I want you to give us an idea as an architect on the difference between um, urbanization and smart cities. So I think urbanization that is solely focused on the idea of smart cities actually can be really, really stupid. Leaders then tend to put uh, technology at the heart of city building instead of people. Uh, so my issue with the idea of linking urbanization uh, to the you know to the to only the idea of smart cities is essentially a lack of ambition in thinking about how we want to live as a society in the future in some ways i think this is classic work avoidance by our leaders it's 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 also kind of narrowness of vision uh, to think about city building in a very kind of narrow way of smart cities now that's quite a statement that you made here. Um, what I can gauge from your answer, are we kind of trying to mock and or ape another city, another world class city elsewhere before actually trying to mend the necessities, the basic necessities of people in India? Yeah, I think, you know, if you think about what should be the vision of a city, what, what do we want from our cities? Uh, we want great quality of life. Uh, we want it to be healthy. Uh, for us to live here. Uh, we want to have access to great culture and uh, we want our cities to make us happy. So talking of urban cities and smart cities, let's take a sneak peek into what an ideal city should be. Like we discussed last time, a very negligible percentage actually own vehicles here. In this city, for example, the city of Mumbai, almost 55% of people walk right. on a daily basis as a primary and mode of transit. That's a huge percentage. Yeah, it's, it's the number that the rest of the world tries to achieve. They right. can't. Exactly. It's very hard to you know have such a high level of pedestrian. Yeah, capacity. but for that again, the government, like what I've noticed in my travel in European cities, People actually prefer walking because the environment is so clean. They either prefer walking or they prefer cycling and which is actually should be the culture, right? I think so. I mean, I my favorite places in the world and most of our favorite places in the world are places where you can walk, have access to like a park or a small plaza where you can just sit down and eat your lunch. And you know, if you made your mission about quality of life, those would be the programs that you would focus on and not smart meters and smart energy which yeah. are all nice but it's you know it's it's not focusing on the ambition and the vision of what we should be doing with our cities talking of apps while we were discussing last time we met you told us about this app that you created as part of so one of your projects tell us more and how can something like that be implemented today is it possible at all or it was just uh, for the project's sake, it cannot be implemented here. So I might be sounding a little bit, you know, anti-technology, but I have to say, I, you know, we all grew up in the age of technology. I love technology. I'm, I'm complete technology's child. And I think, you know, in terms of smart cities, my favorite idea of a smart city is how to use technology to change the way our governments work. You know, so the app that we did was essentially uh, allowing citizens to report local issues in their neighborhood. So you could just walk out of the street right now and if you saw a garbage pile like we did, uh, you can report it to the local authority and hopefully they take kind of way to fix it. Imagine the power of technology to open how uh, public contracts are awarded or how decisions are made about giving land to someone or even things like, you know, getting our certificate online. I think that's a very transformative idea for me in terms of smart city. Pollution levels that is equal to some toxic chambers of industrial units. 
you know it's it's there's long term health consequences any child that grows up in our cities is going to have a lung capacity that is 50% lower than right. kids from any other part of the world and you know those are problems you can't solve with an app it needs right. very strong willed policy to change that and talking of strong will people's behavior is also very important when it comes to smart cities so how do you think technology the components that you mentioned will change people's behavior i actually love the idea of using uh, some of the principles technology companies use to get us addicted to things <laughs> like how facebook and twitter has changed our lives in some ways i mean i think it will be in promoting something or making people aware of something is i think it's changing behavior about? i think you know think about Uh, so how would social media think about gamifying uh, you know reducing waste for mm -hmm. example or reducing water use and con you know conserving water so what is social media contribute to that not just social media yeah, i think people. the mechanics of social media you know things like they use these things like gamification which is very you know it's about human emotions how we behave in groups so you know incentivizing us to be behave better competing with each other to yeah. have like lower water use you know those are things that uh, are really fun but interesting ideas that you know you can use technology for and there are already hundreds and thousands of apps which are doing that right. about you know trying to make a game out of trash reduction for example oh, uh, that's a great idea actually yeah cool. i love this app that the city of san francisco uses which essentially uh, gives anybody the access to know what is the solar potential of your building and you know what are the kind of incentives and subsidies you can access and that has really kind of increased the number of you know users of solar energy things like that make a big difference now without taking any names last time we were discussing since we have a very strong opinion on uh, the implementation of technology in india you think the it giants which are contributing big time to making smart cities smart is a kind of a marketing tool for them i think the kind of things that have emerged from the technology world some of them very cool they can become pilots cool pilots and they have right uh, but it's 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 a very tiny part of how cities will work i don't think uh, just one kind of idea of technology is going to solve how cities are you know so i think that was my issue and technology you know companies tend to kind of think that they'll accumulate large amounts of data and try to optimize it in some ways on that note let's take a look at how internet of everything changed to barcelona cisco is extremely excited about barcelona because the city is utilizing the internet of everything by connecting its people and things to a city wifi barcelona is creating new services richer experiences and unprecedented economic opportunity for its people for its businesses and for its partners We face in Barcelona the same, the very same problems that uh, every city in the world faces. So we want to tackle those problems with technology. What we are trying to put in place is a common solution for all the cities of the world. It is estimated that 40% of traffic in city centers is caused by cars trying to find a parking space. Now, in-ground parking sensors communicate with devices in cars to help vehicle owners quickly find an available spot. We transform the experience of wasting your time waiting for the bus into an, a, a contact, a full contact with the city. People can find information on routes for the bus, plus information on the area, business, commerce, shows. Barcelona's citizens not only enjoy the smart bus stop experience, but are also able to maintain their Wi-Fi connectivity while on the bus or underground train. This allows citizens to get the same sensation of connectivity as they get at home. Understanding that much of a city's energy waste comes from less than optimal use of lighting, Barcelona is installing highly efficient street lights which are dynamically managed to save energy, optimize maintenance, and provide a safe environment for citizens. A city-wide network of sensors provides city officials with concrete information so that they can make decisions based on real-time data. Getting information on the flow of citizens, on noise, on pollution, on traffic, on weather conditions allows cities to streamline the city operations, reduce costs, and also improve overall sustainability. Lack of governance of data. Imagine being watched all the time by somebody whom you don't know. 
are heard what if your phone i mean we know that governments are already uh, snooping on our facebook and smss and that reminds uh, me of voice uh, yeah last year's case was it edward snowden's um, yeah that's a exactly idea. i think we need to govern that aspect how is this data governed nobody's talking about it who's owning it right now you know you've got these companies uh, who know all of our locations yeah. i mean we you know i use some of them uh, how are you going to control a uber or a ola um, from what snowden's case yeah. Yeah. you as said what they had to say um, as part of their clarification that it was all part of security in making people safe yeah would you yeah. buy that Um, I don't know I don't feel like giving control <laughs> of my life to like one person even if it's the president I don't trust presidents that's a real democracy <laughs> Yeah. So you think there shouldn't be any or prime minister sorry in our case. So there shouldn't be any one control room or any one person. So how how do you how do we tackle this? I think it's a it's a very very early stage for you to even comment. You are not even you have not even gripped the scale of what we are getting into. Uh, we don't know how do you govern something which you have no idea about i mean elon musk who's my favorite favorite entrepreneur recently said that he should be really scared of artificial intelligence uh and you know it's the same for allowing technology to control you if you think about mumbai itself right you feel more safe in carter road where all you know where all those restaurants are than in bkc in middle of the night and that is not a function of cctv exactly it's a function of how you design your not be so crowded no it's the function of how you design your cities you know it's about mixed use communities it's about having active edges and these are fundamentals of how a great city is you know jane jacobs uh, who's the hero for anybody who likes cities always said that the easiest way to make a place safe is through the idea of ice on the street you know ice on the street is people you know either from their restaurants or they're from houses where you know you connect to you the streets that. but it's sad that whatever we've done now recently we've been building like 10 stories of parking lots mm. which we you know which you and me would never walk in that block because it's so unsafe even during the day so i think those are design issues you can't really solve safety in a city through cctv cameras so what are the major challenges according to you apart from this that uh, are plaguing the cities of india and how do we fix those with the smart city components that we're talking about indian city are so the biggest challenge that should be given priority right now i can't even start because indian cities are full of yeah, challenges there are lots of this goes on let's just start with like what's going on right like in this city and most of indian cities large part of the city has no house they live in informal communities in this city in in the city of mumbai it's 60% of the city who live in slums without you know good quality housing according to the la- last census survey almost 60% of indian cities residents did not have access to piped water or sanitation water, exactly. right i mean we are or toilets for that we matter. are in like in a very very early stage of how our cities have to be we don't even have basic services one of my mentors enrique penaloza uh, who is the mayor of bogota who i you know who's my hero in so many ways because he's done so much for his city which is a very poor south american city probably poorer than us but he really improved the quality of life in those cities even though it's very tough and full of crime and drugs but you know he transformed those cities with focus on public transport and walkability he you know he said to me that uh, quality of life distribution is more important than income distribution lack of access to housing Narendra Modi our prime minister he just launched three urban schemes 100 smart cities amrit and housing for all 2020 how do you think that'll be made possible in, in such a short span providing houses to each and every indian i think this is probably one of the key agendas i mean uh, you know it should be the fundamental right to have access to a home so let's take a short break here on the other side we're going to talk about the mumbai coastal road project and a prathima's social venture called the urban vision so don't go anywhere stay tuned where we left was uh, housing for all which is one of the schemes by our prime minister narendra modi housing for all 2020 how can that be made possible given the large areas that slums are occupying i think that is a far more important agenda according to me than smart cities 
because that's a more you know that's that's something that impacts so many so many people in fundamental ways including me for example i can't even live in this city of mumbai which is uh, more expensive than other places that i've lived in like boston or you know palo like alto you said in a few years, we'll have to go and live in slums yeah i think we'll have Instead to do that actually them. now because the real estate prices here are almost similar to you know yeah, large pa- you know parts yeah. of new york or london and it doesn't make any sense so it's how do we eradicate them <laughs> i would get a nobel prize <laughs> if i knew the answer to that but, <laughs> but any idea that you would get i think the you know if you look at what makes housing expensive here is that there's a huge demand supply gap obviously you need to fix that and there are various ways of fixing it uh, i don't like to talk about fsi because you know that's the only thing people talk about but yeah you need to increase the supply of housing what else do you have to do you should get public agencies involved in creating social housing and rental housing units in a larger number i think you really need to work and incentivize the private sector to you know to be interested in affordable housing to be able to make money with affordable housing this is not an easy problem to solve i don't think you know people know how to solve it but some of the good practices is things like you know mixed income housing i there needs to be strategies to increase you know the rental housing sta- stock within any city. yeah so the rental housing model that's also prevalent in singapore mm. could that also be brought here because there is no way that a middle class man can actually buy purchase a property here yeah i it, there is you know the kind of real estate prices that we are seeing it doesn't make sense for anybody to even buy real estate and with our mortgage rates which is at 10% versus london If or I new york i buy i would spend an entire life just no but 10% is versus london or new york has 2% as wow. their interest yeah. rate so imagine i mean when you as a global That's citizen <laughs> when you know as a global citizen look at real estate around the world it doesn't make any sense for you to buy it it's not even affordable it's cheaper to buy in san francisco in i'm sorry not in san francisco but in california or in london and we all are global citizens and you know this is a big problem I, we, we need to figure out a way to solve it um, even in new york and london you have something called mixed income housing where you know different classes subsidize each other's housing you can have a luxury building on top but in, within that building you will have mid income studio units to kind of subsidize housing and quality of life is probably one of the key factors for success of a city in the 21st century not just success of a city but success of an economy think about it you know what is 21st century success for a country like india or a city going to look like it's going to be about the ability to attract the best people and the best people are not going to live in these cities for a long long time uh, if you don't give them good quality housing and you know great quality uh, of life quality and of education life, yeah. so there's one upcoming project in mumbai which everyone's been talking about and very excited about the mumbai coastal project which you had a very strong opinion about tell us about that tell us your take on that because there are a lot of cities that you had cited the last time we met that they're actually demolishing the coastal roads in favor of public spaces is there any way that we could have public recreation and a road as well for private vehicles so this is a project that doesn't make any sense to me and i okay. don't like it for many reasons uh, <laughs> the first one is i think it will fundamentally change the way mumbai is all the things that we love about mumbai you know having access to water being able to see it but imagine what you know all the things that is special about mumbai not existing and and that's one reason i don't you know i'm i'm very concerned about it the second one is about ambition and you know vision uh you know i find it highly highly embarrassing you know as a citizen of the country that everybody is touting uh, the coastal road as the biggest infrastructure project in the history of the country <laughs> right like the grand thing that we did it's it's downright embarrassing i'll tell you why i have been told and i asked many people about this that the daily capacity of the coastal road is going to be about 2 lakh people yeah you know what was the capacity of the uh, train system that the british gave us oh. 75 lakh oh my god right so it is it is a huge. joke just came back from spain 
and they have built this high speed rail between madrid and barcelona that takes you to madrid and you know from barcelona to madrid which is 600 kilometers away in 2 hours 15 minutes you know that's the infrastructure that's we should have yeah. not a expressway which not has hours and hours in which cars is, which is going yeah. to take you to kandivli to nariman point in 45 minutes <laughs> Does it make sense in the era of climate change where we are already seeing, you know, extreme weather events? Pratima, we spoke to a lot of people when it came to the Mumbai Coastal Road project. Why not listen in to all of those and see what their opinion is on this project? People are talking about sea levels rising. This coastal road is your uh, answer. You increase the levels so that the whole uh, western side will be higher. We have the eastern side also. Raise the eastern side. You're, you'll be the first city to take care of the rising of the sea waters so that we can say, okay, for another 100 years, Bombay doesn't have to worry about it. I think coastal road is the connectivity for a person to reach to their house by enjoying the environment. So obviously, environment protection is also there. The person's time protection is also there. And the environmental pollution is going to reduce. So I think whatever misconception has been spreading is because of the ignorance. But then when you are building anything offshore, or near the shore, you have to take care of all those parameters. There are chlorides, sulfates in the groundwater and subsoil. So you'll have to make your concrete more durable. How do you think our cities can be made climate resilient? Like the Rockefeller Foundation, they are doing a lot on a huge scale all over the world to make cities climate resilient, to have uh, to appoint a chief resilience officer. How do you think in Indian context, that should be made possible? I think in, you know, in, in terms of Indian context, we need to understand a lot of our cities are coastal cities. And how are you going to cheat, you know, deal with extreme weather events and you know sea level rise and very Large. very you know tough sea? The experts, I don't understand. I mean, this is a very technical subject, but environmentalists around the world have now started to emphasize that natural ecosystems are the best way to protect a coast you know, by mangroves and the internal kind of ecosystem. All the natural of, resources. Yeah, so that's why I'm, and that's another reason I'm scared about coastal roads. I don't know what it's going to do, you know, in the time of uh, climate change. Now, talking of climate resilience, Pratima, I want to show the viewers how the Rockefeller Foundation made our city Surat climate resilient. Take a look. And we are on the map of all hazards. Sea level rise, flood, earthquake, we have large industries around us, so city needs to be prepared. And in the last uh, 100 years, we have had 23 reported floods. So we all knew that flood is a recurring phenomenon. So when we arrived in 2008 with the Asian Cities Climate Change Resilience Network, they were a ready and willing partner. They were like, this is exactly what we need. I think one of the challenges here is to find ways to effectively leverage and build on the work, uh, particularly with ACERN. They've done a lot of thinking around climate resilience. Um, they have a number of initiatives, some of which they've implemented and to great success, uh, such as the early warning system with respect to river flooding uh, and dam releases. We will be in a position to predict how the flood is going to come, when the flood is going to come, the intensity of the flood and people who are likely to be affected. And I think the icing on the cake has been now them expanding their horizons beyond the climate and floods issue to think more widely even about resilience and that's really what 100 Resilient Cities brought in and I think that's why they were a successful applicant first time round because people could see when they were assessing Surat that there's real energy and dynamism here. They understand that this is really central to their future. We have to consider that everything is done keeping resilience in mind. So now it is a step going from reactive to proactive. Pratima, tell us about your company, Urban Vision, which you call a social venture. How does that work and the kind of work that you've been doing and your team? So the Urban Vision is a social venture and a thing to tank. And uh, the reason we, you know, we were conceived and instituted was to think about ideas that make cities work and ideas for livable and healthy cities. And we do a lot of things, you know, I think there needs to be, you know, we need to share a lot of ideas of how to make cities work. So we have a huge kind of agenda of sharing that with, with the community. Lots of forums, uh, we have a fabulous education program, we run, you know, fellowships for young students. We also run this really fun program called the Leader Study Program, where we take CEOs of big real estate yeah. and infrastructure companies to study like great cities 
we actually have a fabulous opportunity to leapfrog into a new model of urbanism and show the world actually on how great cities can be. Uh, so we can either go that way or we could go the ex exactly opposite way. In At this point in time though, it's a little bit disappointing because all the ideas that are being rejected by the West are being embraced by and, us. Yeah, Things like yeah. expressways, you know, Madrid Coastal and Boston road, yeah. is breaking down their the flyovers yeah. and making parks while we are building new ones. Uh, you know, gated communities being rejected by the West we are accepting it. We are taking the worst ideas from them at this yeah. point in time and I hope that changes. Otherwise, it's not just bad for the future of our country but for the rest of humanity. Climate change has no borders, nor does you know, civil unrest or social inequity. Right, well, well, we just hope that we take the best from around the world and learn from their failures. Like you said, thank you yeah. so much Pratima for joining thank us. Thank you so much, this is so much fun. <laughs>